It was about uh, 24 hours ago that a federal judge uh, in the uh, NSA uh, bulk collection of phone records, um, Judge uh, U.S. District Court Judge Richard Leon, granted a preliminary injunction sought by plaintiffs uh, in the case, ruling uh, that uh, the uh, NSA actions likely violate the uh, Fourth uh, Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And uh, one of those plaintiffs uh, who brought the suit joins us now, Larry Clayman, of course, founder of Judicial Watch and more recently Freedom Watch. Congratulations are in order, Larry. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Well, I you, think congratulations are in order for the American people. Okay, so you 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 are you are thrilled beyond belief uh, uh, by this uh, this verdict. What is it going to mean? Because uh, I'm a little confused. It was not a class action suit. I think it represented four people, if I'm not mistaken. And and again, if I'm not mistaken, he put a he put this uh, set it aside pending the appeal by a sure appeal by the government. Correct. Well, we did file two class action lawsuits. Okay, there's one against Verizon, there's the, the other against Sprint and the other cell phone providers, as well as the Internet providers like Google and Facebook and, and Skype and you name it. So they're both class actions. They haven't been certified yet as class actions. But the case proceeded ahead on behalf of these four plaintiffs and, uh, excuse me, three plaintiffs, myself, Charlie Strange, and his wife, Mary Ann Strange, and we kept it simple, we kept it lean and mean with regard to the preliminary injunction. The judge issued a ruling yesterday. You can find it on our website at freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org. We hope people will support us in what we're doing. And it's a very strong decision. It, it finds that uh, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution has been violated. The judge enters an order uh, restraining, that is, stopping this illegal conduct to, to collect telephone metadata on 300 million Americans, not just me, but everybody else. There is a precedent here. Uh, and uh, the judge did stay at pending appeal, but he also said at the end of his decision, and again, you can find that on our website at freedomwatchusa.org, that if his decision is upheld, I'm confident that it will be, and the government hasn't stopped what they're doing in the interim while they take the appeal, that when the case, when the order comes back to him, there will be hell to pay. And the government's now on notice, Obama, Senate Democrats and Republicans who are his enablers in, in this program with intelligence committees, the NSA, Eric Holder, everyone is in this case. They're all on notice that if they violate the law further, they've committed a crime. And we will seek criminal penalties if they do that. So we're very thankful to this judge. There are very few judges in this country that would do this because most of them lack courage. Most of them have become the yes men of the ruling establishment. But we have to take our hat off to Judge Richard Leon. He's an American hero, and, and he gets the credit. I made the argument on the jockey, but he's the horse, <laughs> well, and, uh, he, and he came through for the American people. Well, Larry, he, he said it was, uh, I cannot imagine, well, he basically wanted to know, he said that the Obama administration, uh, which defended the uh, program as a crucial tool, tool against terrorism, um, said that uh, the, the administration did not, was not able to point to one um, terrorist uh, action that was stopped by this program. Do you think that that was key? Well, I think it's one aspect. I mean, basically what he's saying is that the government uh, lied to him again. Uh, you know, there's a history here, and we pointed that out to the judge, and he actually wrote it into his decision. Again, you can find it at freedomwatchusa.org. He wrote in his decision how many times NSA has lied to the courts, uh, how many times they have committed infractions of the law, to put it mildly. And he made reference to our founding fathers. He made reference to James Madison in particular, that they would never have conceived of a nation that would ever do this to its own people. You know, Karl Marx conceived of a nation that would do it to his own people. That was the Soviet Union. Uh, the Chinese Politburo conceives of such a nation. That's China. But the United States, uh, we have become a police state. And the American people cannot make one call anymore or use their Internet without fearing that their government is going to gather information from their doctor, lawyer, accountant, uh, you know, or anyone that could destroy them. And so w this is a very serious situation, and it is the biggest violation of constitutional rights in our history. If our founding fathers had faced this from King George, if he had had an NSA, 
they would have been picked up, arrested, and executed before they ever got to Philadelphia to sign the Declaration of Independence. We're talking to Larry Klayman, uh, founder of Judicial Watch and more recently Freedom Watch here on the Steve Malzberg Show. He won the case yesterday, the landmark case uh, against the NSA. Let me ask you, before we get to a very uh, uh, interesting and troubling uh, column by our friend Jerome Corsi at WND today, um, I, I just want to ask you, what is the next step? What, what, what's next uh, in the court procedures? Where do we go from here? Well, we're going into discovery right now. We're going into discovery right now, and we're going to be seeking a national security clearance. I had one as a Justice Department prosecutor, so I should be able to get it. And we'll be able to uncover more information, perhaps, than even Snowden has at the current time. He's leaking information uh, every week. And this is part of the class action suit? Yeah. yeah, and then we're going to be seeking certification of the class. So... This is something that's important. You know, we have people out there right now. We, we did the heavy lifting here, guys. Uh, we got Rand Paul, who shot his mouth off, you know, months ago, that he was going to do a class action. Now, all of a sudden, after he's collected all his money from donors, he decides that he's going to think about a class action. You know, the politicians, and that goes for the Tea Party ones up there in Capitol Hill, and I'm a, a proud Tea Party uh, person. Some people say I, I invented the concept. But this, this what's really the beauty of this case is that the American people did it for themselves. The congressmen and senators up there in Capitol Hill, they play political games to, to shake the money tree. Uh, we had a, a, a rally in front of the White House weeks ago. I invited all the Tea Party reps. None of them showed up. They were all unavailable. We asked for the resignation of Obama and Boehner and other leaders that have subverted our Constitution. So this is a judge who is standing there for the American people, and the American people are invited to join our lawsuit, and I hope they will. Go to freedomwatchusa.org, and don't be fooled by these politicians that are maneuvering to, to become president uh, of the United States. There is no savior out there politically. American people need to do it for themselves. Let me ask you about, uh, as I mentioned, Jerome Corsi at worldnetdaily.com today wrote a piece of, of, about you. Um, uh, you also are a contributor there. Um, and, and he said, uh, the, or you said in the piece that, uh, uh, when you filed the lawsuit, uh, people started getting emails from you, but you weren't writing them. Well, tell us about that and what you suspect was going on. Uh, emails and texts. Uh, after I filed the lawsuit, people that I am in contact with would get text messages from me. Uh, it's not funny uh, that I never wrote. Things like, you know, I can't talk now. I'm at the cinema. I don't even use the word cinema. I was saying at the movies or something like that. Uh, and all kinds of things like that. And then our client, Charlie Strange, whose son, Michael, was uh, an NSA cryptologist assigned to SEAL Team 6, who died three months after bin Laden was killed by SEAL Team 6 yep. in retaliation in Afghanistan. He starts getting emails purporting to come from his dead son. And the, the poor guy broke down and, you know, had a nervous breakdown and things like that. His webcam is being turned on in his computer, and we know the NSA does that. That was revealed last week. This is an intimidation tactic by the government to get us to back off, but we're not backing Is off. there any way you could trace that and or have you tried, or do you have any idea who specifically or what department specifically? You think it was the NSA, any, any, any higher-ups? Well, I believe it was the NSA, CIA, whoever. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's an old government technique to, to scare people. Uh, when I was at Judicial Watch and we were fighting the Clintons, the white guys in aviator glasses would walk back and forth in front of our office that was in an African-American neighborhood. There weren't that many white guys in aviator classes following our people home. Uh, they'd show up in front of my house and take pictures. Um, the phone would click, you know, go click, click, click. They wanted me to think that they were wiretapping me, which they were. You know, we're not going to be intimidated. All right, Larry. Forget I that. Our, our founding fathers weren't intimidated. And let's send a message to NSA. Take it and shove it. I, appreci I appreciate it, sir. Thank you for the time. Uh, congratulations again. You're welcome. Thank you. you. Larry Klayman, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Um, well, doesn't mince words, and he's uh, got the legal victory in his back pocket now to, uh, to stand by these words. And uh, we'll see how it progresses from here. We'll await the appeal, and uh, it's going to get very interesting. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, former Governor Jim Gilmore from Virginia, on the Steve Molesberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.